On the Pocket Now Power Users so far this season, we've talked mainly about hardware. Today, we're going to bridge the gap. I'm Joe Levi with Pocket Now. Here's what you need to know about the hardware abstraction layer. Begin with this topic is, well, let's just call it very geeky. It's an interesting concept to understand, but it's a concept that's been deployed in various different ways and different methodologies across the various platforms, from iOS to Android to Linux, Windows, and AS400 computers. Not all of the terminology is a one-for-one -one match, but the concepts are what we're trying to get across today. So if I say hardware abstraction layer versus kernel level versus device driver, know that to a certain extent, in this context, those terms can be used interchangeably. We'll do that a little today in the video. So far we've talked primarily about hardware, and that's great because hardware, it's wide, it's varied, there's a lot of it. And even when we're talking about, say, an SOC, there's a whole bunch of stuff to consider. Today we're going to talk not about software, but the thing that's in between. The hardware abstraction layer, the API, the drivers, the kernel. Now no, those are not all the same thing, and I probably just made half of you, I made your brains explode by lumping them all together. Depending on the platform that you're using, this hardware abstraction, and we'll get to that definition in just a minute, this hardware abstraction can happen at any one of those different locations, or a few of them combined. Kind of confusing, so let's get into it. Hardware is hardware, it's physical components. It's stuff that you can look at and see. It's a chip, it's an antenna, it's a screen, it's a digitizer, it's tangible. Software, on the other hand, is the stuff that we use. We write code and it makes stuff happen. It has instructions that tell that display, I want you to make a button that says this and looks like this and put it right here. When you push on it, it does this. When you unpush it, it does that. That's essentially computer programming in a nutshell. There's a lot more to it, of course, but that kind of gives you the gist of things. Let's step away from mobile technology just for a minute and go back to kind of the ancient days when we had DOS and we had mainframes and we had AS400s. If you wanted to write a program for those environments, you could write the program, but if you wanted it to do anything, you pretty much had to write the driver interface yourself. If you want to be able to print, you've got to write a lot of what that printer needs for your software to say, here's this letter that I just wrote to mom, and now I want to translate that from dots on a screen to dots on a printed page. HP printers, well, you had to talk to one way, and all of the other printers, you had to talk to another way, and NEC printers were a different way, and everyone was different. It was kind of a pain because if you wanted to get a really good word processor, the developers that were writing the code for that had to take a good portion of their time and not make a good word processor. They had to write print drivers so that you could print the stuff out onto paper for thousands upon thousands of pieces of hardware. Doesn't sound very efficient, right? It wasn't. Moving forward to today, even in computer technology, we have this abstraction layer. So when I want to print something, I say file print there, send it off, it translates all of that stuff and puts it into the hardware, into a head moving across a page, putting dots down or putting toner down, however it may be, and you get a printed sheet of paper out the other side. The driver there is written, in this case, by HP. HP makes the driver for their printer so that the word processing person doesn't have to. Okay, so let's come back over to mobile technology. I'm gonna use Android as an example here, primarily because it suits the, uh, the illustrative point. But the same thing applies to Windows Phone, same thing applies to BlackBerry, same thing applies to Apple. The reason I'm using Android is there are a lot of people, a lot of different manufacturers that make hardware for Android devices. And Android is kind of the one unified operating system. There's some differences and some nuances and whatnot, but let's pretend for this example, we have two different pieces of hardware made by two different companies. 
HTC and Samsung, let's say. Both of them running stock Android. Not Sense, not TouchWiz, stock Android. So the operating system is, quote, identical. There are some nuances there, but those usually come in drivers, in that hardware abstraction, in the kernel. Any one of those places can do certain types of hardware abstraction. So now when I touch the screen, whatever hardware it is that I have powering my screen, capacitive hardware, if I've got Super LCD or AMOLED or whatever kind of display I have to be able to see it, all of that has to come through this translation layer. Essentially, as a developer, I can say I want a button to appear on the screen that's this big, this color, says this word, and when I push on it, it does this. That's all I have to do. From there, the operating system says this is what a button should look like, and it talks to the driver, it talks to the screen, and says, here, put these dots here in this configuration, and listens for that touchpad, that touch input, to feel my finger press on that button. And once that happens, it does something else entirely, and it goes on and does its own thing. The developer who put that button on the screen doesn't have to know if you're capacitive, or resistive, or Super LCD, or AMOLED, it doesn't need to know any of that because all of that has been removed to this separate layer. An abstract layer where you just have to say, give me a button that looks like this, and when I press it, make it do that. Beautiful. Now behind the scenes, that button may be saying, report my GPS location on the screen. It's got all these different pieces of hardware behind that API that can find out where you are, from your altimeter, to your digital compass, to Wi-Fi to help triangulate your location, to uh, cellular to help you triangulate your location, to, uh, to GPS, whether that's a GPS or Glassnos or anything else, and who knows what else we're going to get in the future. But all of those are made by different manufacturers. So you need another layer to go out and get that information, translate it back, pass it back through the location API, and back into the app. That's a lot of stuff that's happening. And if the person who said, I want to know where you are, had to write the code to do that for all those different pieces of hardware, their software wouldn't be that great. They're spending all of that time doing all of this other work. So that's really the purpose of that hardware abstraction layer. Again, whether it's a HAL proper or drivers or APIs or even in the kernel or various combinations of all of them, the HAL is becoming a much more abstract concept. It's becoming much more useful and much more powerful. And it's really what enables us to bridge the gap from hardware and software and brings the whole thing together. Thank you very much for watching. If you liked the video and think you learned something, please give it a thumbs up. And if you want to make sure you don't miss out on anything that we're going to do in the future, hit that subscribe button down below. For Pocket Now, sharing information about the how and how your device works, and a little bit of why it does what it does, I'm Joe Levi. I'll catch you next time.